he's traveling almost every day. So I'm either at the White House or on the Air Force One. They've put together a schedule that is pretty brutal, although not unusual for the end of a campaign uh, cycle with November 3rd just coming right up. But it is unusual in the middle of a pandemic. Jeff Mason has been Reuters White House correspondent for 11 plus years and has his ear firmly to the ground there as we approach Election Day, November 3rd. Jeff, thanks a lot uh, for talking with us. What is the general atmosphere, the general mood in the White House now that the president is supposedly COVID free and, and back on the trail? Do you, do you, do you notice a, a renewed sense of energy, of optimism there? Well, there's certainly a renewed sense of, of wanting to get back on the road. And the president has done a couple trips uh, this week and, and will continue to do trips going forward. It sounds like they've put together a schedule that is pretty brutal, although not unusual for the end of a campaign uh, cycle with November 3rd just coming right up. But it is unusual in the middle of a pandemic. And I think that's a reflection of the fact that he and others around him uh, view that roughly week and a half period in which he was uh, sidelined by uh, the diagnosis of getting COVID as a as something that they need to make up for. I perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president because I feel great. I feel like perfect. So I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. And, and uh, pre uh, the, the the weeks running up to November third, how, how would you best describe this final push? I mean, I've heard reporters uh, describe it as a do or do or die mentality in the White House. Is that fair? Well, I mean, he's behind in the polls and uh, he's been consistently behind in the polls despite multiple different attempts to bring Biden down with his attacks on law and order, with his attacks on uh, Vice President Biden's sort of mental acuity, uh, with that debate that ended up being really neither good nor for, or not good for either candidate, but worse probably in the polls for Trump uh, based on his constant interruptions. So yeah, I think that they see this final stretch as, as uh, do or die in that um, this is about political survival at this point. I think just to throw in in conclusion to that thought, the, the Trump campaign remembers 2016 and the fact that he was uh, supposedly trailing Hillary Clinton uh, in October of, of that election year, I think gives them hope that these polls aren't necessarily right. And, and how was it, Jeff, in, in, in the days following the COVID diagnosis in the White House? I've heard other reporters call the atmosphere there uh, rudderless, fearful, uh, unsure. Was it, was, it a, was it an odd atmosphere in the White House? Well, it was, it was certainly a ghost town uh, initially because so many people were affected or had come into contact with not only the president, but the other people around him, uh, Hope Hicks, um, and, and other aides who had who ended up coming down with COVID. So um, there was also, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call it a climate of desperation, but there was a climate of change uh, in terms of their behavior. I mean, we've spent Axel the last m multiple months at the White House where reporters would wear masks and reporters were taking uh, precautions according to the guidelines from, from health professionals and White House officials just weren't. Mm. And now we see them wearing masks in their offices and when they're walking around the West Wing. So that's a shift and that's a, a reflection of the reality that there was an outbreak really at the, the highest center of power in the United States. Okay, so they, there is a sense that the staffers are taking this more seriously now. They're wearing masks, as you, as you say. So, so there, there isn't, they're not returning to this sense of, of bravado, especially after the president's get out there and don't be af afraid of this virus message. Well, I'm, I'm reluctant to say that that's not going to come back because there have been at least smaller in scale outbreaks at the White House before. Uh, you may recall Vice President Pence's spokeswoman, Katie Miller, got the virus. Uh, a few months ago, and I remember then that there was a big shift in behavior. There was a memo that went out to all the White House staff about mask wearing, and it didn't last long. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if this lasts longer. The the, the U.S. government um, uh, has a, a history of opacity, it seems, when it comes to the president's health. Has it, has it been uh, tough, Jeff, to, to squeeze details out of the president's staff? Um, how do you assess, if you like, what you're being told now? 
Well, yes, it is tough. And, you know, they, I think, are balancing um, largely to their own, you know, to what is good for them, that, that um, dichotomy or those competing challenges of sharing information versus protecting somebody's uh, right to privacy with regard to his or her health. When it comes to the President of the United States, though, his health is a national security issue. So it, it, I think, led to a lot of frustration among reporters and, you know, just right, voters and, and others watching the United States uh, when at the beginning it wasn't super clear that we were getting the whole picture about his health. And I think that that remains a question mark. I mean, the, the doctors um, and specifically his, his White House doctor has said that he's no longer contagious and is virus free. But as we know about this virus, there are just a lot of open questions about how long it takes to recover. And of course, you're you're no stranger to the president's ire. Um, you know, we we've seen him berate you in uh, in in a number of press conferences. The issue of what happened when you were in France continues to be a story. You're going to have to take that off, please. Just you can take I'll, it off. You're, you're, how, how many feet are you away? I'll speak a lot louder. Well, if you don't take it off, you're very muffled. So if you would take it off, it would be a lot easier. I'll, I'll just speak a lot louder. Is that better? It's better. Yeah. Mr. It's better. Has that impacted the way uh, you approach uh, a briefing or a story? Uh, is it intimidating when he does that to you uh, in public? Has it affected your standing with his aides? To the question of is it intimidating, the answer to that is no. To the, to the question of whether it impacts how I ask questions, also no. I mean, the, the couple instances in which he's given me a hard time for wearing a mask, it was just clear that we were I was following and then other reporters were following guidelines to wear masking. And in both of those instances that sort of took off, I was in fact far enough away from the president, uh, but I was around other reporters and that's why I left the mask on. In terms of how it's affected my standing with AIDS, I mean, there are a lot of reporters who have um, tricky back and forth with the president. So I don't think it's something that is unusual at this White House. It does sometimes affect my relationship with the president. He'll hold a grudge for a while. Mm. Uh, and there are times when I've had a back and forth like that with him where he'll then decline to call me for a long time. Um, I, I'm not quite sure where I stand right now, but it doesn't matter. My job is, to, is just to keep going. Okay, and, and fi finally, you, know, you talk about keeping going. Um, what does the schedule look like for you in the in the final uh, weeks to election day? I imagine it's hectic. How much time are you spending in the White House? Uh, I know there's a Reuters have this ro rotation. Just tell us a little bit about the schedule. Sure, we have a team of reporters um, sort of covering the White House right now. So we take turns going into the White House and going on his trips. He's traveling almost every day. So I'm either at the White House or on the Air Force One uh, with the, the rare sort of day in between where I'm working from home like, like so many of us are. But it is definitely the, the final stretch uh, to November 3rd. And somewhat in contrast to the Biden campaign, he's really going all out in terms of travel. And that, that impacts all of us in terms of staffing because when he travels, we have to have one person at the White House to see him off. Uh, when he does those those q and a's with reporters and we have to have one person on the plane so it's busy but that's um that, that's normal for the end of the campaign yeah all right good luck to you jeff uh, we look forward to reading uh, uh, all your stories and always a pleasure to talk to you thanks a lot thanks axel